backwards on me. <laughs> Are bad. you sure that's right? 139. 139. Are you sure, though? You sure I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. My bad. You know, I'm in Vegas. I'm excited, man. Whenever I get out here, like, my, I just don't, you know, I mean, I get in the mood to party, right? Well, no, but I know you forget things sometimes. Are you sure we're on 139, dude? We are. Like, we're not, like, down at, like, 115 or 116 <laughs> or something <laughs> that like I'm, that. That, that I'm positive, man. Okay. That I'm positive, man. So, I mean, look. Second we're out of Vegas. podcast from the amazing uh, Saints studio here in, um, in the wall saints Vegas. wall saints yeah man um, i love that name man 107 east charleston road suite 220 yeah Dude, and, thank you so much for letting us be here man yeah Absolutely. tony welcome we, to the show we came man in earlier and pushed your buddy around and like yeah no move that over there we're gonna put this here okay <laughs> yeah Sn- snipped was uh <laughs> dude he told us that you guys started this up man I walked in there. I was like, "Dude, so much cool shit going on out here, man!" So well, he thank said you, it was you. in a little bit different condition, uh, maybe last week or something. Oh yeah, we actually he he made a little video of it, of cleaning. You couldn't even walk through here. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, this looks like a like you got gallery space. Everything's all set up on the walls oh. nicely, and everything. We do now. Yeah. I, we're very very uh, flattered. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, thank you so oh, much, man. Thank you for inviting us. So hell yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so it's Tony, right? Yeah, Tony. Tony, a.k.a. Tone Castle. Tone Castle. Yeah. Okay, that's on Instagram. Um, Tony, where are you from originally? I'm born and raised in Las Vegas. Ah, another Vegas local. Whoa. Yeah, that's two in a row. Rare. Yeah. That is that is very rare. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The Vegas is like LA because I'm an LA local man, and like it's just like everybody here is like a tra- you know always a transplant. And we're, we're like, there are locals, man. You know, I mean, I grew up in this fucked up place. So, I mean, did you, how how was it? Did you grow up in Central what, Las what Vegas? What part too? of Vegas? Yeah, were you like in the in, inner inner city or were you in the outskirts? Um, kind of both, I guess. Mm. Um, what's considered inner city and what's considered outskirts? In the, yeah. Is it the closer to the strip? Like, is that? Well, what there's goes? North Vegas and there's. Yeah, I was. It was towards North Las Vegas, which was you know, kind of where the city ended. But you know, back in my day when I was younger, <laughs> Vegas wasn't. Well, wait, how old are you? The size. Our, our I'm 35. 35? Okay. Yeah. Ah, fuck you, man. <laughs> We're on Fucking family. young motherfuckers, man. God damn it! And he looks Not younger, yet. folks. I'm sitting here looking at this guy. He could pass for like 25, like easily. You and your buddy, you stayed out of the sun, didn't you? No, actually. We just, I don't know. Well, you got, we had the opposite effect. I'm in the sun all the time. Well, you have dark hair. You got dark eyes. Yeah. So, yeah, Adapted. you got the good, you got the pigment for it, though. Then. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, so growing I'm up. I'm just bitter, dude. I'm bitter. I'm, I'm you know, I'm almost 52. I look like I'm 60 show, fucking <laughs> five. You know, it's, it's because of the, the twins, you know. Yeah. Teachers. The last 10 years, I aged, you know, um, Probably about 25, 30 years <laughs> in the last 10 years. I'm starting to feel that one. Yeah. You have kids, right? Yeah, you just, yeah, you yep. just have a little uh, daughter, right? How yep. old is she now? Um, almost seven months. Oh. That's no, the sleeping is not back yet, is it? You're just. No. Actually, I had to take a nap just before we got here just so I can catch up. <laughs> You're already getting old. <laughs> I know. I got gray hairs coming in. Yeah, <laughs> well, shit, man. I mean, you know, that's super cool. How, how has having a baby like changed your art career, man? I mean, has it, you know, it's motivation. There you um, go. That's what I was about to say. You know, I can't. It's it's almost like doing nothing is. It makes me feel guilty mm. at this point. Now you got you got another. Mouth you are no you, longer right? a survivor. You are now a provider. Exactly. It's a big fucking difference. Yeah, you it know? hit me like a ton of rocks, man. I went from being a free bird, dude. Complete. Freebird, <laughs> up until I was like 38 years old, doing whatever the fuck I wanted to, whenever the fuck I wanted to. Same. And then I went from doing that to the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah. And I really didn't know how I was going to deal with it. I really didn't, you know? Yeah, I never thought I'd have a baby. I never, it wasn't like one of my big goals, but now that she's here, I'm. it's, it's like life changing. You know? Yeah. My whole perspective is different and uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. Awesome, well, let's man. get back to uh, a little bit uh, earlier, though. Um, so you grew up here. When uh, when did you realize art was going to maybe be your thing? And that that banging is uh, it, someone just putting some more work up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the neighbor putting her work up. Um, uh, you know, we're honestly, in the real art gallery, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm 
jealous, man. I got space envy. Yeah. I got town envy. I got all. And you know, this guy's got a good beard too. Look at that. Look at how nice this dude. Any of the sick ass sleeves, man. You like, and your part. You, you and your guy, your guy you work with here. Um, just got amazing beards. I got beard in me. Look at my look at my shit, dude. I got like gray hairs and shit. If I try to grow my beard out, I look like something from Deliverance. Hey man, and you can almost hear the. Look, ding, 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 as the resident ding, Asian ding, guy, ding, 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 I can only grow those like kung fu beards that grow like really long. You, you know what I mean? Right. I can't. Eat, I, my beard, my shit comes in patches. You have, bro. yeah. You know what I mean? I, you I have can't like do a little anything, mustache. Yeah, exactly, dude. I got, Manchu. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's how Asian people grow beards, man. So I'm just saying. But anyways, man, let's let's, let's get, get back to his art, man. <laughs> I want to definitely ask about your tattoos in the future, though, because you have some sick ass sleeves. I mean, oh, thank you. And oh, dude, those neck tattoos, man, and they, they, they must be pretty painful too, oh, man, right? God, yes. <laughs> We're just talking about that today. What is, can I ask? What's your what's your face tattoo? The one under your eye, man. Is it oh, anchor? the anchor. Yeah. Um, it didn't really mean much. It was me and my friend were like, "Let's go get our faces tattooed." Yeah. And if if uh, we don't do it today, we're probably never going to do it. So. <laughs> It wasn't the first one you got, though. That's no, what I'm, assu- no. I'm assuming the sleeves came first, basically, but, right? But even, I mean, like, I started getting tattoos at 16, like okay. some crappy little homemade ones where yeah. I traded alcohol for a tattoo. And oh, shit. Stuff. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> Do you remember what your first tattoo was? Huh? Yeah, it was this this Os Rotten Band tattoo right there, and it, it's all messed up and sometimes still rises. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see it's it's not, not quite great. as good as the others. Nice. I like it still. I like it still. But, so dude, the cool. arms. Holy cow. Who did the arms? Um, actually, it's it, it, a bunch of different people. Amy Press, Gianni Russo, those are both local artists, did most of my work. And then I just got some out of town here, out of town there, just kind of... It's like a travel destination thing, yeah. too, for tattoos, right? That's why I feel like some people travel and they eat at restaurants, man. Sometimes some people, like, they travel and they go get tattoos, man. It's like a memory, right? So exactly. That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, hell yeah. So anyways, back to growing up in Vegas, man. Now we know that you traded alcohol for... Getting tattooed <laughs> at, at a young age. I mean, like that's oh. how I started doing art too. Is uh, like so I was you know big in the punk scene. We had all like the leather jackets and stuff. So I would get paid in alcohol to to paint band logos or or punk images on. Dude, I heard uh, the Vegas stuff. like metal and punk scene is actually like pretty sick, man. It's it was small. It's getting a lot better, and it's the same thing with art too. Like the culture was barely existent in. As, I mean, in my eyes, mm-hmm. as I was growing up, and it's like, as I'm more involved, it's just getting bigger. The more people move here. Um, Were you driving to L.A. before to go to, like, punk shows, and then, like, all of a sudden they started coming to Vegas more and more? Yeah. I mean, okay. we'd get lucky every now and then. Okay. But uh, I actually moved to L.A. for a few years to try mm-hmm. to do the music thing, and it just... Okay. Well, what do you play? Work. I play bass. Okay, nice, nice. I I, I mean, I, I'm a DJ. I mean, produce music, too, man. Oh, nice. The music thing fucking is tough, man. You, you know what I mean? But obviously, you got a good art thing going on, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, do, you, do you miss music at all? Do you performing and everything like that? Yes and no. I, I do like uh, art. I, I like... I don't like that in music you're kind of relying on your bandmates or... It's a collaborative. Or, exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like kind of limiting, whereas art, it's all me. Yeah, totally. No, I, I feel you. Like, uh, I feel like that's why musicians during the pandemic, I feel like they're hit really hard, man, because a lot of the shit that they do, it really Ooh. involves... Yeah, what, like, is it? Let's get the, uh, what was the pandemic like for you? Yeah. Having the, the child. Oh, man. Um, she was pregnant when it started, right? She was pregnant. I quit my, my cushy construction job. Uh, oh. We opened this gallery, and then I want to say four or five days later, they shut us down. Oh, oh shit! My God, so dude. my stress was at an all-time high. I must have lost thirty pounds. I'd forget to eat. Actually, oh, we were yeah. on a mural together, and I nearly passed out because I forgot to eat. I was just my anxiety I was through the roof. That. Jeez. Yeah. Um, well, dude, man, that's work ethic right there, man. Sweet. Shit, oh, dude. Man. Yeah. But that's cool, man. I mean, you went from doing construction to this, man. How much of a change is that, bro? Well. I have a lot more fun, you know, like, <laughs> it's just like, you know, working for someone else. And, and it's not that I, I minded what we did. We did like remodeling and stuff, which was okay. But, um, just taking orders from people and, um, uh, not doing what you want to do. And I think things should look a little different, but you know, well, that's whatever. not how we do it though. Basically. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I see. Yeah. There's not too much. Well, creativity. You know, there's, there's times you have to have where, you know, <clears throat> you have to have a work that you can do. So that you can do what you want to do. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then, you know, when you get good enough at doing what you want to do, that that starts making money for you, then that's when it's, uh, that's when the happiness comes. That's exactly what happened. And, and so I was, you know, I was doing murals and art for five or six years before that, and it was just kind of a part-time thing. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to make the full jump. I think I can make it. And then 
We're what, kind of, what, what kind of art schooling have you had? So um, I went to a vocational school in high school, which uh, it was like a magnet pro- program to take me out of a bad neighborhood. Yeah. And because uh, you're trading alcohol at sixteen for tattoos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was a little, I was a little shithead, but. Um, <laughs> No, I'm that's doing cool. the bad no, no, things dude, with my you, friends. You, you, yeah, so anyways, you're, you're sidetracking my story. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, we were at vocational school going to art. Oh, yeah. So uh, art to me was always just kind of easy, like an easy A mm. in, in class. So I thought if I take their animation program, it'll be easy. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, and it, it kind of was, but uh, it was more on the computer type animation. And yeah. Then when, uh. it, when I went up to, the, the, to 3D it kind of lost me because I had no interest in doing that. I didn't want to sit at a computer and design a character and, you know, it just it, yeah. it took the fun out of it. Mm. So that was my easy A. So I graduated from there. I had, I have the kind of parents that want me to get a real job and don't think that art is. Clock what, are, what are the kind of mediums yeah. were you working with other than just on the computer during that time? Oh, well, I was painting those jackets. I was, um, so is that acrylic airbrush? What acrylic pens, mostly okay. some, some brush work, but, I never took art seriously because I was always told that, you know, you need a real job. You, of that course. art isn't real and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, most people aren't good enough. Well, that's one thing. I, I mean, a lot of times to make well, money. Well, no, you know, a lot of people are good enough. They just don't know how to market themselves. That's true. That's or true too. wherever they are, there's just not a market for it. That's true. That's know? true too. So yeah. then it becomes more of something that's a therapy, you know, that, that makes you feel good. Or you use it to, to decorate. Yeah, definitely. But, um. So when um, when did you go from the um, I guess uh, Make vocational school? Where did you go from there? Um, so I, I took one semester of college, and I wasn't a fan. I, I didn't like the structure of like an art school, art classes where mm. I have to do what other people want, and then I felt like I was just back into that circle where it's like a job more than mm-hmm. something I like to do. You like flexibility, right. yeah, and then. At the time, I was still doing construction. I was like having to, to take time off work to go to class, which was costing me money, and it just it just wasn't it wasn't working out for me. And then uh, I took like a ten year break where I did music and other things. And then um, one day I just was like, you know, I want to make a painting. So I painted something, and it wasn't great, but I was like, whatever. And it actually took off on Instagram back when Instagram had a decent algorithm right yeah. so i was like this is easy and then you know a guy i, I go through and and i see other artists making like a living off of these things and i'm like i could do this yeah. I could totally do this yeah. so it kind of gave me some faith in myself to do oh, it yeah. and then like i said i just did the both jobs until i got to a place where i can do just this can i ask you man like did people call art your hobby at that time yeah i mean I feel like people still do. Okay. okay. Like, well, you do it for a living now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It depends on who you're talking to. Yeah, no, I, I'm, just, I'm just very curious about that because, like, well, um, you know, I'm trying to make sometimes my transition in the future to hopefully become, like, full music. And as you know, it's very difficult to live off music, especially, right? Yeah. And do what you want to do, especially, right? Yeah. You can do things you don't want to do in music and then, like I said, make some money, too. But, you know, a lot of times some people refer... Or you know that don't know me so well. It's like, oh, your your hobby music. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah. it's it almost stings, man. Like you know, what I mean, it's like I can't be taken seriously by you. Yeah, you still think it's a hobby, so <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm just wondering if you if you guys feel that way, making that transition. You, you, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, um, I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to say, but like, uh, you know, do people you you still feel like it's a hobby, basically, right? I yeah. I mean, even some of my old coworkers I keep in touch with, they'll they'll just have like a a comment. Maybe not even necessarily worded like that. Just like, uh, I know you're following your dream and all, but like, do you want a real job or <laughs> this place is hiring? Or this? I'm like, dude, I'm getting paid for this. I'm not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know yeah. what it takes. <laughs> when did you, when did you uh, learn to, to spray paint? When did that come along? Um, well, I mean, I used to spray paint when I was younger, just characters on, on walls and stuff when I was younger, but I never really took the art seriously. I was just kind of more into the, so was you like and, tagging? Did you do any tagging? I wouldn't consider myself a tagger, but I did like some graffiti, basically, to sneak in and do, but, but like characters. Okay, I never okay. had. Cr- I yeah. didn't do a crew thing or anything like that. I just oh, um, okay, characters as in like um, letters or characters as in uh, uh, as in like do they faces have crews or faces? here in in, in uh, like big graffiti crews? They do. Yeah, really? 
I feel um, like they might be pretty gangster out here in Las Vegas. They man. can be, yeah. Okay, okay, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like I know guys, but I'm not. I would never. But you know what, though, it's especially now having a, a kid and everything, oh, dude. You yeah. don't want to be on a crew. You don't want to be on a crew. No, I'm too old for that for sure. So that's smart. So you, so basically, uh, you're using spray paint. Yeah. I didn't, but that's airbrush, right? That is, yeah, it's actually both. But we're, we're looking at a uh, Edward Scissorhands done done by um, Johnny Depp, Eddie Edward Scissorhands, and uh, I'm uh, I'm assuming, I'm guessing um, that uh, you do the background maybe, and then you and then you sketch, do your sketch down of the of the face and everything, and then um, from there you what, you go in with the spray paint. So I, I kind Some of... Some brush work, maybe? Yeah, I, I kind of work... Um, so, you know, spray paint with... I'll cover in spray paint, kind of get an idea of what I'm trying to do, then maybe do some brush work, and then go through with the airbrush at the end to clean up wow. lines or get wow. the details and stuff. And then some paint pens. I use as many mediums as I can to get what I want out of it, you know? Very cool, man. That's that's important, man. See, that's... See, the detail, you know, a lot of people, man. Like, there's so much emotion. Uh, they never lies. really, you. you know, check all the different mediums out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's... One of the things that's going to really help uh, make you happy and, and successful or whatever as an artist is to, to figure out what medium it is that makes you get what look you're looking for. Exactly. And, I mean, I've had plenty of people, you know, shit on me for, for mixing mediums or like, oh, you can't do everything in the spray can. It's like, <laughs> I maybe I could, but why would I want to? I'm, there's no way I'm going to be able to get uh, something that I want out of just a spray can if I'm doing eyeballs that small. And right. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Are you getting mad at me because I know how to use more mediums? Like, No, I'm telling you, man. There's so well, much you know emotion in those eyes. There are yeah. these people that, you know, it, it reminds me of this lady that um, I, I was doing uh, portraits of horses for a while. Uh, this friend of mine was a, a trainer, and, you know, I said I did a drawing of the horse. And I'm like, damn, man, you know, I think uh, that she's going to buy this thing, man. I'm like, okay, cool. And so... Um, when she was asking me about how I did the, the piece, it was just some pastel and colored pencil and some cans and paper. Um, she's like, well, now, did you, um, did you draw that by hand or did you use a projector? And I was like, well, I drew it by hand. But, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, I did draw it by hand. I used the projector, but I did draw it by hand. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But part of me didn't want to tell her that I used the projector, which is fucking ridiculous. You know, because I guarantee you that what I sketched down from that projector, the sketch down from the projector, I guarantee you that most people couldn't make it look like right. what I made it look like right. at the end. You know, so, you know, I think I had a, yes, right, she bought another piece. And, you know, the, the price was, uh, you know, a little bit more. And she was like, well, you know, I, I thought it would be a little bit less. You know, and I'm like, well... You want me to, to to draw this without using a projector, right? Well, yeah. Like, well, that's that's the price. Now, if you want me to use a projector, it won't be as much. Yeah, I mean, people will, you know, people have this like idea, but it's like, okay, you go take a projector, put it up on the wall, and then do this. Yeah, let's you see how so you easy. do exactly. Yeah, let's see what mediums you have to use. Well, people and just let's see what effect you get. People just want to know. People just actually want to see like a magic trick a lot of times. You, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like do this magic trick and make this blank canvas beautiful. Like you know what I mean? Like no, my my yeah. favorite thing, my favorite thing that just drives me fucking crazy is when someone says. Here, here, here's some paper. Okay, here's 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 a pencil. Oh, okay, here's draw a pencil. me something. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> draw me something. <laughs> oh. And then you know what I've yeah. done before. I've just actually done some letters in the word something. You know what I mean? There, here's your little throw. Here's something. Huh? <laughs> I've had so people, people, like, people yeah. don't ever do that to to an artist. Okay, have something in mind. You know, if you can ask them to draw something, draw. Have say anything. Draw a fucking flower. Draw me a dog. Draw. Don't just say something. You yeah. know. I think I think that's kind of like uh, when you tell a comedian, "Oh, you're funny." You tell you're a comedian. Tell me a joke. Like <laughs> it's kind of like one of those things. It's like you know, you know what I mean. It's like, <laughs> goddamn, dude. Those are the consumers, though. Okay, like yeah. you, you know, what I mean, those are actually the people that like don't understand it that you have to like explain to them about like why something is and they could be convinced to buy something so you, you know what i mean like, you're a musician here's a guitar play me something <laughs> play me something well i mean the guitar i mean like i said 
you either play or you don't, right? You, you know, yeah. right for the guitar. So I feel like it's a little bit like, all right, I'll play you something real quick, all right? You know what I mean? But uh, but like I said, for drawing and telling jokes, it's like, dude, this it's so, you know, situational, man. Like you know, so. But dude, man, I'm trying to figure out what that sound is. It's the fucking lady putting up the fucking paintings, man. Dragging some, dragging some shit. Dragging it's like all the furniture around right now. Yeah. I don't care. No, it's it's more real, man. <laughs> well, I just want people to know that you these know, are the sounds of an art gallery. You exactly. Know? <laughs> so the tattoos. Have you ever done any tattoos? <laughs> um. Yes, I've I've done them with like the stick and pokes. Uh, Ooh, yeah. We're just we're just uh, uh we had an episode with Dave Navarro recently who was the host of Ink Master, right? Yeah. And then he has a tattoo that with the stick and poke on his stomach, it was said like a, um, I forgot. It said trauma kids or something like that, I think. You, you know what I mean? So, but anyways, man, I heard about that. He, he's like, yeah, I just had this girl just so stab you, me in the stomach for an hour. Tattoos? I've given like an ex-girlfriend a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I know. When you were with her, right? I'm not going to ask. Okay. I'm not going to ask, Poor but girl. is the reason why she's your ex because <laughs> the tattoo wasn't good? Or? I don't even want to see what it looks like. <laughs> but yeah, that wasn't my medium. It just... I see. The That's... canvas moves. I'm not a fan. Yeah, dude. I could never do that. Oh, I, I could never do that. I do have a huge respect for tattoo artists, and I and I love yeah. them. That's why I have so many, but I just... it's I don't think that's something I could do. Which one was your most painful? Oh, my neck for sure. Oh yeah, the, the Adam's apple, Adam's and apple? then down in this pit right here. Oh, under it. Shit. oh. I mean, can you compare a feeling to it? I'm just, it literally just feels like a knife. I mean, a, a needle going into your. Head. Yeah, I mean, and okay, so I had it done, and then I had to get it redone because it <gasps> wasn't <gasps> great to me. But uh, oh. so you're laying on this table, you're kind of leaning back, and then they got their hands on your throat, tattooing. It's like <laughs> so all the blood's rushing up, and oh my god. Uh, Oh shit! Did you pass man. out at all? I felt like I was going to. I mean, it's like when you're getting your neck tattooed, you're like, I'm never getting another tattoo. Why am I doing this to myself? All these oh, thoughts oh, are going through wow. my head. Like, how, why am I doing long? this to myself? Like, how long were the sessions? And how many Ooh. sessions were there for the neck? I've had two separate sessions. Each one was probably about an hour, but it felt like much longer. Even, I mean, just on that one spot, I should say. I've you, had, like, would you compare it to torture, man? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, at some point, I felt like I was going into shock. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Start shaking and get real yeah. chills and stuff. Oh, like, dude, I got the, I got the, like the, um, I don't know what you would call it, but just like little, like it, it exactly was, the twitches, twitches. Yeah. Oh my god, I, the the one I got on my back, um, it was a three hour session. The dude lined it all and then went back in and filled it in. Oh, brave. Oh. Session. And I would have cried, literally cried, like a. A grown man crying, but um, but there was a girl there. Oh, so I I just grabbed the I was turned around backwards over a chair and just was grabbing the back of the chair and just was grabbing it so fucking hard that the next day all the muscles that oh. it took to to do that were just gone. And I by the time I was done, yeah, I had twitches, man. I was just thin, and I was like lightheaded and shit. Yeah. <clears throat> this is just on your back. It's rough. Yeah, and oh, there, that was the other thing. That was the other problem. Um, <clears throat> I went and made a reservation for the tattoo two weeks ahead of time, put down a deposit because the guy was, you know, pretty good. And just happened the night before, big party, <clears throat> big party. You drinking? Yeah, down, down. Oh, not just drinking. Oh. All kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I can get in there. <laughs> oh. So don't you know, it's very sensitive. Yeah. Very sensitive the next day. But I'm not going to lose my deposit. I'm not going to lose my fucking... <laughs> work hard. I was working at a restaurant, busing tables, okay, that time of my life. And I'm not going to lose my money, my fucking deposit. So that was the three of the most painful fucking hours of my life. Um, so the neck, huh? Oh, yeah. Jeez, man. Well, that's, that's, uh, I'm, I'm, you thank you tattoos? for telling Do you have any tattoos? I have a tattoo on my back. I'm down my spine. What is it? It's my fraternity. A dolphin or something? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dude, that's, I, right, that's right. I, I'm, sit, I'm sitting in here with uh, a fucking guy who has a tattoo on the back of his fucking head and a guy who has a full fucking neck and sleeve. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm not going to talk about my fucking tattoos. We need to right? get you another tattoo. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think you should get a tattoo of, Tony? What do you think oh, uh, no James idea. should get a tattoo? Well, I, I, something musical. There you go. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what's holding you back. 
I'm, I'm going to get a uh, treble clef and a bass clef. No, 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 no right up here, dude. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. No, I mean, you know what? Here's the thing about my tattoos for me. Like, I, I have my fraternity letters tatted, tatted on my back because um, I, I actually thought about it. I had to earn those. You know what I mean? I feel like um, it's just something like a... You know, I pledged for a long time to earn those letters and things like that. Yeah. And so far, I haven't really done anything else like that fucking novel, man. So, so I haven't I felt well, like dude, I have You've been like putting hurt. in an amazing effort towards Striking producing the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for oh. sure. For sure. I'm not good oh. enough yet, though. That's what I'm saying. I'm not good. Should I get our podcast logo but on my what? chest? Dude? You're not good enough yet? <laughs> no, you know what? Here, Actually, I didn't tell you, tell you this. Um, I, I recently actually got a fucking mentor, man. Okay, like... Oh, I've yeah, been, you mentioned some of that. Okay, it. actually, this is a public <clears throat> mention, actually. Um, John Pignato from L.A. Riots. I don't know if you've ever heard of L.A. Oh, yeah. Riots, actually. He took me as a student, man. Hell yeah, thank you, John, dude. Yeah. John, thanks, man. I appreciate it, dude. And it's just so nice. to help. Yeah, man, it's just so nice to, like, have somebody tear apart your music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, you're at some point where you're, like... That knows like, what they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, <laughs> you're at a point where you're, like, okay, I think... In other words, you have some asshole going, Dan, I don't like the way it sounds. It's just like a... <laughs> Are you talking about somebody? <laughs> yeah. But, I'm not uh, going to talk about who it was, but, yeah. <laughs> no, but, you know, it's so nice to have somebody, like, who knows what the fuck they're talking about. Listen to your music and say, hey, I know what's wrong with it. Because right. you get to a certain point where you're, like, at a certain level, you're, like, on equal level or better than most of your peers. And you, you know what I mean? That you just... I didn't ever go to school for this shit. Like, I just went raving and met people, producers. You know what I mean? So it's just, like, it's so nice to have, like, a... a a mentor of somebody who's actually like done the whole DJ thing is ghost producing for other artists and like actually like understands. Do you know what ghost producing is? Teach. I'm just saying you're you're kind of giving me a a weird look. Well, no, ghost producing, no, everything okay. but ghost producing. <laughs> okay, I'm with you on. But the ghost producing, I'm not going to pretend like I know. Okay, I yeah, no, don't of, know what the fuck I'm talking. A lot about. of times, a lot of artists nowadays, especially a lot of DJs, they don't write their own music anymore. <clears throat> they basically have a team of people. That write their songs like a pop star. Oh, you, the you talentless know. motherfuckers. Okay, no. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, like, you know, as as an industry, all they can do is sing. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, as in, the thing is, like, well, all they do in the, the DJs is actually just hit play a lot of times in the big stage, and yeah, then like no. the yeah. music goes and then off, they just, the lights go off. You know what I mean? But and and they do that. The songs not even made by them, but the thing is, like, their brand, like, uh, you know. They they have the platform right, so they they have other artists write songs for them. Those song, Tony, artists get paid. Tony, you have a what what are do you remember any artists that that inspired you? Were there any artists that inspired you, or did you just kind of you know kind of come up with your own thing? Um, you pick and choose. I'm kind of finding there. artists as I go. Oh, okay. I, I wouldn't lie and say I was into the art community when I first started. I just you're a natural, basically. So I mean, you're just kind of doing your own stuff, man. I was just like taking little pieces of this, or or basically comic art. I loved the graffiti, even though I wasn't like great at it or lettering. Yeah. I just liked the calligraphy, and, and um, you know, you get into airbrushing or anything really. I'd see, I would just be like, okay, I, I, I'm going to try to recreate that just to see if I can. Yeah, you, yeah. And you know what? You're you're like a great example of what I try to tell people. Um, you, you don't need to go to an art school, okay? You don't need a bachelor's degree of fine arts Absolutely not. or anything like that, okay? Because <laughs> what it comes down to is if you're doing a, a commission piece for somebody and they don't like it, it doesn't matter if you got a master's degree or whatever the fuck right. you got. <laughs> they they don't, don't like it, they don't like it. I if mean, they I, do like it, then it doesn't fucking matter. I know people with arts degrees that, I mean... Some of them are successful, and some of them don't do art at all. So yeah. mm -hmm. it doesn't really mean anything. You know, oh, dude, I guarantee you that there are art schools that that help people to decide that you know this is I shouldn't be doing this, <laughs> and it's a good thing because here's the thing: once the computer age came around, the traditional artist doing paintings and shit like that got smoked, yeah, smokeified, and um, it's. Basically turned into what you guys are doing now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at Snip's work. Amazing yeah, I mean, stuff, man. It'd be a lot harder to do twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what? I thought it was really cool that you said, "Hey, I want to just take a look at somebody else's stuff and recreate it." Man, actually, that's one of the uh, lesson plan things that I'm going through for music. It's like, hey, have you ever tried to remake your fucking favorite songs like from scratch? Like, uh, I'm just saying, like. You're basically doing that as a visual artist. Basically, you're just taking yeah. somebody else's stuff and dissect you basically it. you dissect it. You learn from it. Basically, exactly. it's like the yeah. technique and things like that. 
And um, I, I, like I said, I think you just do that for any type of art, man. You just break it down, and then down to the elements, most simple elements of shapes, right? You know, yeah. I mean, for music, it's like of sounds, right? And then you, it's like, how are you creating these? Because like, if you can't do it, you're not on those people's level at the, at the end of the day, right? right? So yeah. it's just like I, I, I feel like so there's so much taught. It's like, hey, man. Just do what you feel. Do what you feel. A lot of do what you feel in the art community, right? You know, I mean, it's actually. Well, it depends on what your means are as an artist. That's you true. Know? It's like, okay, as an artist, what is it that you want to accomplish? Yeah. You know? Do you want to make money or do you want to use it as therapy? Do you want it to just use it as decorating? Because that it makes a big difference as to how you should go forward and deal with things. Sure. You definitely. Know? Yeah. If you're one to get awards and be in like museums and shit like that then you better have some iron clad balls and you better know some people and, too shit and True. get used yeah. to getting your shit ripped apart and yep. and left behind and all that shit and just keep going um but uh so dude that's that's interesting because um you've managed to actually get into um making money doing your art um without having to go through you know, a lot of the things the other artists have gone through. Right. People are listening right now. I'm mad because. <laughs> I well, like, I mean, I tried college. I gave it a shot. Yeah. I just, it just wasn't the way I learn. Personally. That's cool, man. That's cool. Man. And like, like you said, you never been like sitting in the class and fucking like pay attention to the teacher kind of guy. <laughs> you know, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you always kind of like, you were always talented in, in like art. I want to talk about music real quick, man. Um, when you were jamming in the band, man, like what are some of your band? I mean, what are some of the punk bands that are, you know, Metal bands, I'm assuming you're also into that. Uh, in, what kind of music? Know, what kind of music are you into? Uh, mostly punk rock, like street punk. Okay. Um, stuff that Drop. probably wouldn't be huge anyway, but it's just what I love. Okay. And then metal, uh, just because I wanted to challenge myself with guitar and yeah. bass. Well, what right? do you listen to when you paint usually, man? I listen to everything. You can actually ask Derek. I listen to everything from hip hop to rap. We got some country a little bit. Nice. Uh, what? Country? A little bit. I should say more like a rockabilly, but also some okay, like that's different. Like, there's some good country, man. There's some no. There's some country that is just should not be. You, you play backwards, and that's about it. Just so you can get your shit back. You like, know what I mean? Like Sturgill Simpson. Have you ever heard yeah, 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 I like Sturgill Simpson, man. You know, I, I like his whole crew, like uh, Chris Stapleton, those guys. I mean, I don't even know. I could respect the instruments. Like, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, good like, at what they do. Exactly. You know what I mean? And but but I know what you mean, Teach. There's some like I don't know Tim McGraw shit or whatever. Like, here's the thing, okay? If you're gonna if you're gonna perform, okay, at least look like you're enjoying it. You know what I mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Are they, well, just some of these. Is there a country artist? Country artists just like. Oh, wow, wow, <laughs> yeah, that's wow, not. The... Wow. They're sad, man. They're expressing. I didn't even say anything just now, but you, you know what the fuck I'm talking yeah. about. You know? It's like, dude, play me a. F you know, cry me a river, all right? It, yeah. That's cool. Do you, miss, do you miss doing music, dude? I mean, like, uh, I don't. I mean, just say, so we talked well, a little bit about this. How long did you play bass? How long did you play bass? Oh, man. Um, Probably eight years. Oh okay. man! Do you still yeah. like just oh, so get down you can with the still sometime? get back on it? And how long has it a been since bit, you played? Not really. Um, when was the last time you played? It's been years. I actually bought a guitar and then I, I messed around with it for a couple of days. I was like, I am not anywhere I where I used to be, and I just kind you of, lose it, man. Yeah. It's weird. It's a like, muscle. It's yeah. just like a muscle. right? I feel like art is kind of like that too, right? You, you know, what I mean, if you haven't cut a stencil in like a really long time, I feel like you might lose that like dexterity to like. I do have um, when it comes to the the drawing. Mm. Not so much stencils, but drawing. If I'm drawing something mm. like uh, in, that's sitting in front of me and I'm trying to make it look realistic, um, it'll take me about an hour or so if I haven't drawn in a long time to to get to where I can start getting proportions and and you know, it's like a warm up lining almost. up and yeah, about mm. an hour or so. Never really thought about that warming up for drawing, man. But I oh, mean, dude. why wouldn't you, right? You but know? dude, here's the other thing: like, if I get to where I'm drawing and and painting for a few days in a row, just a few days in a row, mm -hmm. man, I get like so much quicker you get, and you get your calluses back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with guitar though, yeah, yeah. I mean, with, like with guitar, you too. can definitely feel when. The difference between having calloused fingers playing guitar and then not having, and it. also just those hand muscles, like, uh, yeah, like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Hold on, oh, you have some blood, you have some blood back in my arm. Oh, yeah. That's the thing, man. You know what? It's, I always say it's like there's so many things I love. It's like it's hard to really uh, pick one out of the day to like if you if you really want to be good at one, you can't 
you're not going to be the best fucking painter and the best musician and the best fucking podcaster. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like very difficult to, yeah. to if you get do work on one, another one's going to go down a little bit. You, you know what I mean? So like, well, but and the other thing is, you know, you you're only going to be good at something for so long, you mm. know. <clears throat> Until you start going dementia? Yeah, until your your faculty start failing you. You know, like me. <laughs> that shit's already starting to fuck Yeah, we're bringing back full my, circle, too. My, <laughs> the, the, the hairs on the back of my head are, are leaving me. You know what I mean? Look at my but eyes. You know I got glasses on now. They got down at the bottom here. They're bigger because, you know, Here's my thing, eyes though. are going. Teach has once told me that once you hit 40, it's hard for you to learn stuff. But I definitely yes. can tell you that this man has learned how to do a podcast. Like Dude, after- there was nothing to learn. <laughs> There was nothing to learn. Well, no, we just sat down and started talking about some fucking artwork, and then an hour later, he was like, uh, "That was an hour," and I'm like, "Whoa, okay." <laughs> Looks difficult. And it was outside. just he and I. You know what I mean? I'm like, "We're going to be doing this with an artist," but it's cool, man. See, we get to like this is the cool thing I love about this podcast, man, because it's like we we knew some Las Vegas artists, man, and now we get to sit here today with Tony, man, and learn about some like his art and stuff like that. In the future, when we get together and have like an event in Vegas, man, like it's all like, "Hey, man." I heard you on this podcast, you know what I mean? And then it's just people getting together. And that's what I love about the street art kind of community, man. Yes, it's exactly. still very, community. like, open, you, you know what I mean? I feel like in music, it's definitely not like that, right? You know, music is like, oh, you're, you're, you know. It's more competitive, you, I think. Okay, yeah. Whereas art, it's like, it's like a family. Uh, I mean, there are a few people like that, but the majority, it's like all these artists here, we're all in a building scene and we're all helping each other out where we can and, and you know... Uh, That's weird because I, I feel like, you know, everybody only has like one space above their bed, one space above their couch, man. Well, I can the tell visual, you, <laughs> one thing I can tell you is after... after uh, I, who, who is the... Um, who is Snipped? What's his... Oh, Derek? Yeah. After meeting him and you and, and knowing um, uh, Sean and Sage, um, they're just four great people. Yeah. You know? That's that's what it comes down to. I, like um, I said, man, the street art community has always been like just such cool people, man. And um, like I said, I hope we can often come back to Vegas and like uh, meet up with more artists, man. You know, and promote your guys' gallery more, man. Because um, like I said, Vegas uh, it's a cool place to come and then stop by a gallery and pick up some art, man. On the way back to L.A., you know, what I mean, I think that's a nice little trip. Oh right? yeah, see something new, something different. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. So I mean, that's pretty much an hour, man. I mean. Um, but uh, is there anything? I mean, what? we're at ten. We're at ten o'clock right now. I mean, I know we started a little bit late, but oh yeah, man, we to, we got we got a lot of fun with Tony, man. Well, dude, it was like I was just saying. What, what was I just saying? Oh yeah, we our first yeah. podcast. We sat down and we started talking. I was actually a little bit worried. I was concerned because I had done like maybe a couple podcasts, like someone else's podcast, and I just remember one in particular where I I had told like almost everything I had to say, you know. And I, I, I glanced down at my watch, and it had only been about 10 minutes. Oh. And I'm sitting there looking at these, uh, there's a couple of girls that were doing the podcast, and I was just thinking, oh, my God, what the fuck are we going to talk about for the rest of this hour? <laughs> yeah, I was pretty nervous. And were you, you know, nervous? I was. Okay, it was. It was no, not no, bad. It feels much better now. Yeah, yeah. No, that's well, we good. were we were throwing them around like crazy at the first there. We were just like <laughs> bing bang, bing bang, bing bang. Well, like I said, after after we've done like what fucking 138 episodes of this thing, like you know, I mean, you learn how to like at least like keep the conversation going. You, you know, what I mean, so. Well, what helps is that the the dynamic between he and I working together yeah. is what happens because what, sometimes I get too analytical with things. I'm like, no, no, wait, wait a second. Tell me about that, you know, and then I get, you know, obviously a little bit too, you know, obsessed with something, and he kind of helps to, you know, move it along at times as well. I'm just kind of like the layman fan of like, you know, I, I I like to paint a little bit too. No way am I like on any sort of professional level. I definitely do it as a hobby. Like it doesn't sting when people tell me painting's a hobby. Yet. You know, <laughs> you know. What I mean? but, but like I said, it's just like to me, it's just fascinating that I can't well, believe. There's like, you know, so many interesting artists and it's like, dude, man, we have this little platform and we just want to kind of have our little community and get together and let everybody get to know each other, man. So thank you so much for coming on. What, our show, what do you got coming up? You got anything thank coming you, up you want to tell me. people about? Um, man, we're doing a big job for the city. I'm not even sure. If oh, I'm yes. Honest. He yeah. mentioned that. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's uh, well, anytime you're working with government, man. I mean, like I said, you know, it's a, a nice little check usually. You working know, with you know the city. I mean? Yeah. So, and it's and it takes beautiful. forever. Everyone's got to have their opinion in on it. Yep. And, and you're probably dealing with like a board of people that. Exactly. 12 also, chefs in the kitchen. Yep. 
Oh, and you got to do it. No, I don't like the way this looks because it's really saying something awful about these people. Okay? But, but you know what? One thing and you're going to have some very angry people <laughs> if you don't change this. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> what the they, fuck they, was that? I don't know. I'm sorry. They posted uh, something on Facebook. The city did. Just kind of mentioning that they were going to do something on the walls. And even the comment section was like, what a waste of taxpayer money. Like, you want those walls covered in weeds and all grayed out? Then, oh, I mean, people oh, will God. complain about anything. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. That's the thing about social yeah. media, man. It's given everybody, like, just a way to a lash voice. out. It, lash Everyone, out at people, too. Everyone's got know? their own channel now. And it's basically. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know? But the, you know what? Like I said, anytime you're working with the city, the reason... Why it takes so long is because I think it's a, a beautifying the community thing, and they want to make sure. Well, it's what like, I just said too. You're dealing with like a dozen or more people yeah, who but, have to make a decision. Where, like the, the school, I was just trying to do a, a thing for my kid's school in their auditorium, right? And I did nine different versions, <laughs> nine. And I'm not even like the the differences in these different versions was crazy. And it finally ended up with, you know, okay, yeah, we're going to do it. Gonna do. Okay, well, let's, can we, um, we, we decided on something different. Can we, and I'm like, no. Yeah. No. I'm like, <laughs> when you guys figure it out, yep. let me know what it is and I'll come do it. Okay. I'm not going to do any more versions because no. Yeah. You don't have to deal with that as much with the city. No, or do you, dude. Do you? Yeah. It wasn't that bad, really. I mean, they did have some ideas. We went back and forth. If anything, it's like the permitting and, and waiting on the end dot and uh, sidewalk closures. That's where we're going back and forth. Oh, on. okay, okay. So, and you, you, know, you would never think about that kind of stuff when you're like, hey, man, I'm ready to paint. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm ready to, I was ready three months ago. <laughs> shit, dude, yeah. Well, shit, man. Like I said, whenever we come back to Vegas, man, we definitely love to catch up with you guys again and just like see what's where going on. Where do people find you? At, at Tone Castle uh, on Instagram. Hell yeah. Tone-Castle.com. Okay. Tone-Castle.com, man. And, uh, you know, give, give Tone a follow, man. Check out his work. He's part of our family out here in L- LV. Help dude. support. The man's got a new six-month-old child. So, you know. Yeah, man. We're going to be throwing some events out here. Bring the love and bring it big. Once I think Vegas is coming back way before California because I don't think we're ever opening up ever, man. So, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, we, we might have some uh, events to kind of get dude, together. Did you watch The Last John Oliver? I don't know. Talks about pandemics. No, they just want to. I, you know, they they want to keep. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to. They want to keep the people in their seats. You know, who are who who like watching the scary movie. You you know, I mean, like I've had enough news. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly, man. Shit, dude. But anyways, man, thank you so much, Tone, for coming. Thanks again for letting us in your studio. Thank you guys for coming and And like I said, we'd love to have you on again and just like shoot the shit again. You you know, I'm you and Snip, man. Your 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 gallery's fucking awesome, man. What's the address, dude? For 107 East Charleston, Suite 220. Suite 220. Hell yeah. And it's in the beautiful, what's this area district called, man? The Arts District. The Arts Arts District, man. So hell yeah, man. I'm jealous, man. It's like a well-kept room. It reminds me of uh, Scottsdale, Arizona a little bit. It has never looked this way. You're just... And and I'm just saying... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, no. no, I'm talking about outside also. Oh, okay. Like the the neighborhood as well. I'm just saying... Have you ever been to Scottsdale? Long time ago. Oh, okay. Well, it's, <laughs> man, it, it just looks like you. everything there was just, at least most of it, is just looks nice and neat. Most of Phoenix kind of like that way, but it's it's like that around here, man. It's just... Like, yeah, the thing you know, about Vegas, everything weird. usually costs you an arm and a leg, man. And I can tell, at least in the Arts District, it's some place to wander around, maybe take some cool pictures, man, you know, and maybe check out a few art galleries and maybe, oh, you know, I should yeah, go home you know what? If you're you going to spend some money on something, spend it on some fucking art because that, that food that you're spending all your money on, it's going to come and go, you know? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, okay. That's. I think that's a good place to end it, T. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. That's, yeah. so, dude, thank you so much again, man. Uh, to the audience, follow us at PTTP Show. Leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, follow Tony on Instagram, man. And uh, thank you so much. Love you guys. Take care and peace. Peace.